Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 4 on the GRE Quant Fundamental playlist. Today we are going to be discussing exponents and roots. Let's get started. So this chapter basically deals with numbers that look like this: a raised to b, x raised to y, or something like 2 raised to 3, 4 raised to 5, 7 raised to 18, and something like this. Now what you need to know here is what they are called and what it really means. So this basically means that you have three twos and they are all multiplied into each other. Right? So 2 raised to 3 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2. Similarly, 4 raised to 5 is 4 into 4 into 4 into 4 into 4. Right? So 5 times you will multiply. Now note that if it is raised to 3, there will be 2 multiplications. If it is raised to 5, there will be 4 multiplications. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4. If it is raised to 18, 17 multiplications. Now, another important thing to know is what they are called. Right? So now, each of them has a name. The one on the bottom has a name and the one on top has a name. The one on the bottom is known as your base. And the one on top is known as your exponent. You can read these numbers in two ways. Suppose you're given this. You can either say 3 to the 8th power or 3 raised to 8. Now, I usually go with this one because it's much more simple. So suppose you're given a number like this. You can either say a to the bth power or a raised to b. I'm guessing you already know that when the exponent is 2 or 3, we've already got names for them. Right? If it is a raised to 2, you would say a square. And if it was a raised to 3, you would say a cube. But for anything greater than that, you usually say raised to 4 or to the 4th power. Alright, now something important to remember is this. If you have a positive number and it is raised to a power, now if the power is even or odd, it doesn't matter. Since the number is, since the base is positive, it will always be positive. But if a negative integer is raised to an even number, it will also be positive. And if a negative number is raised to an odd power, it will be negative. This is because if it's plus, it doesn't matter, right? Because 5 raised to 4 is 5 into 5 into 5 into 5. And raised to 5 will be into 5. Doesn't matter. Suppose you have a negative number, right? Minus 3. Suppose it is raised to an even, uh, even power. So say it is 4. So minus 3 into minus 3 into minus 3 into minus 3. So minus into minus plus plus into minus 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 into minus plus so an even power for a negative number will always result in a positive number but if you have an odd power right then you know that if you make pairs of these right so minus into minus is plus so you can hold these two minus to minus is plus so if you make pairs of two it'll always be plus that's why even powers will result in positive numbers but if it's an odd number if it's an odd power like minus 3 raised to 3 suppose so minus 3 into minus 3 into minus 3. So minus to minus is plus, but it's again multiplied by a negative number. So the answer will be negative. So for a positive number, it doesn't matter what the power is, it's always going to be positive. But for a negative number, if the power is even, it'll be positive. If it's odd, it's going to be negative. Now, if you didn't understand this part, you might want to go and watch my first lecture on integers. I've explained it thoroughly there. All right, now some very important things that all of us are mostly aware of. Now you have an integer here, it's a non zero integer. Any non zero integer raised to zero is always equal to one. Right, your integers, they contain the negative numbers, the positive numbers and zero. This one holds for this one holds good for all the negative numbers and all the positive numbers, not zero. Because zero raised to zero is undefined. Right? Now the second one is what if you have a negative exponent? You can convert a negative exponent into a positive exponent by taking the base to the denominator. So basically if you have 3 raised to minus 2, it's the same thing as 1 by 3 raised to 2. Right? Now I'll prove this a little later on in the lecture. The third one is a very common mistake that most of us make on the GRE. So it says basically, I'll, uh, I'll explain with an example, minus 3 square and minus of 3 square. These are not equivalent because if you calculate this, it comes out to be minus 3 into minus 3. Minus into minus is plus, 3 into 3 is 9, so plus 9. Whereas this one is minus of 3 into 3. So this is equal to minus 9. So this is plus sign and this is minus sign, completely different. So this is a very important and it's a very commonly made mistake in the GRE. So make sure you don't do this. And the best way to understand roots is to look at the square root. So the square root is defined by a symbol like this of a number n. So square root of a number n is equal to r. Now r is said to be a square root of n if it satisfies the following equation. r square is equal to n. Basically what it means is that a root of a number is that number which when multiplied twice, right, r into r, it will give you the number. 
n. So if you say 2 into 2 is equal to 4. So 2 is the square root of 4. Now you can also say minus 2 into minus 2 is equal to 4. And that's right. Minus 2 is also a square root of 4. So similarly, like how you have square roots, you also have cube roots. Cube roots are denoted by the same sign, right? Say cube root of 8. But since it's a cube, you write 3. If there's no number written, it's assumed to be 2 and it is a square root. So now it's a cube root, so we write 3. And this basically means to find a number which when multiplied thrice will give you 8. Right? So it should satisfy the equation r cube is equal to n. And the number that satisfies this is 2. Again, 2 into 2 into 2. 2 twos are 4, 4 twos are 8. So 2 is the cube root of 8. Now, here you cannot have minus 2 into minus 2 into minus 2. Because if it is multiplied an odd number of times, right, the answer is going to be negative. And we want a positive number. Minus 2 into minus 2 into minus 2 is going to be minus 8. And that's not what we want. We want plus 8. So the only cube root for 8 is going to be 2. But the cube root for minus 8 is going to be minus 2. Right? Minus 2 into minus 2 into minus 2 will give me minus 8. And the cube root of minus 8 is going to be minus 2. So we spoke about square roots and cube roots. Let's extend this discussion a little bit more. So depending upon what the number is outside, right, what root of it is, you can say it is an odd ordered root or an even ordered root. Now let's see how it differs for positive numbers and negative numbers and how many roots you get for it. So suppose it's a positive number, right? So if you want to find an odd ordered root of a positive number, you will always have one root. For example, you can say, let's say the third root of 27 or the cube root basically, right? The cube root of 27 will always have one number. Odd ordered roots of positive numbers have one answer. So it will be three. That's all. Now, if it is a negative number, right, an odd ordered root of a negative number is also going to have just one root. And here the answer is minus 3. Minus 3 into minus 3 into minus 3 will give you minus 27. Now, for even ordered roots, if it's a positive number, say 16, fourth root of 16 is equal to 2 or minus 2. Right? But for a negative number, you can never have an even ordered root. This is something very important. Right? For a negative number, you don't have an even ordered root. It does not exist. Because if you have a negative number that is multiplied four times, it's always going to be positive. So this does not exist. So basically, the odd ordered root of a positive number is going to have one root. The odd ordered root of a negative number is going to have one root. But the even ordered roots of a positive number have two roots. Right? And even ordered roots of negative numbers do not exist. So to explain this better, let's say you have 8 and minus 8. Now, as per our previous discussion, we can say that 8 has 1 cube root, 2 fourth roots, 1 fifth root, 2 sixth roots, like that way, it alternates, right? Because odd ordered roots for a positive number will have 1 root, and even ordered roots for a positive number will have 2 roots. Now, if it comes to minus 8, you know that no even ordered roots exist. So it has 1 cube root, no fourth root, 1 fifth root, no sixth root, and so on. Now, before we end this lecture, a couple of properties to help you simplify these numbers faster. These two laws are going to make your life a whole lot easier. Now, a raised to m into a raised to n is equal to a raised to m plus n, right? So when your bases are, are the same, but your exponents are different, what you're going to do is you're going to retain the base and you're going to add the exponents, right? So a raised to m into a raised to n, retain the base a and add the exponents. Now, suppose the bases are different, but the exponents are same. Then what do you do? Then whatever operation you are doing, carry that out with the bases and retain the exponent. So here it's being multiplied. So you multiply your bases and you retain m. Right, exponent. Now to prove this, let's take an example. Say 2 square into 2 cube. The bases are the same, the exponents are different. So 2 square is 4. 2 cube is 8. 4 eights are 32. 32 is 2 raised to 5. And 2 raised to 5 is 2 raised to 2 plus 3. Right? So this could have been directly gotten here in one step. Right? 2 raised to 2 plus 3. M plus N. 2 raised to 5, 32. Now, Similarly, say it was 3 square into 4 square. Right now, your exponent is the same, but your bases are different. So, this will be 3 square is 9, and 4 square is 16. So, 9 into 16 is 144. Right? Now, 144 is 12 square. We all know that. What is 12? 3 into 4. Right? So, you could have directly gotten this by this rule. Right? a raised to m into b raised to m. AB raised to M. So 3, 3 square into 4 square is 3 into 4, 4 square. 3 4s are 12, 
12 square is 144. Suppose you get something like this a by m divided by a raised to n. What is this equal to? Now, I've already told you before that if you have a negative exponent, if you take it down to the denominator, right, the base, if you take it to the denominator, the exponent becomes positive, right? So, why don't we do it the other way? So, you got a raised to m. Let's get this on top. So, this will become a raised to minus n. Finished. Now, as our rule says, if the bases are same, retain the base and just add all the powers. So, this will become m plus of minus n is minus. So, m minus n. Simple. Similarly, if you have this a by m divided by b by m, right? So what they say, carry out the operation as it is, but retain the power. So you take the power outside, a by b, it was division, so a by b raised to m. And these also can be proved with some simple numbers. Now something that you need to understand is that the square root, right, of a number, say n, is equal to n raised to 1 by 2. Right? This is this number, what is kept out. So if you have a cube root of 8, it's actually equal to 8 raised to 1 by 3. Now, this is very important when you have to multiply, say, square roots or cube roots. Suppose you have root A into root B. Right? Now, what this basically means is A raised to 1 by 2 into B raised to 1 by 2. And as per our previous formula, we know that if the bases are different but the exponents are same, carry out the operation as this, retain the exponent. So this AB raised to 1 by 2 or root of A. Right? So basically what I'm saying is that root A into root B is equal to root AB. And root A divided by root B is equal to root A by B. It doesn't matter if it's the cube root or the square root or the fourth root, whatever. This holds good for all roots, all types of roots, even roots, odd roots, anything. Right? If it is root a into root b, it is root a b and root a by root b is equal to root of a by b. Now the only thing pending was that x raised to minus n is equal to 1 by x raised to n. How is this? So I told you that I'll explain it to you at the end of the lecture. Now let's just forget about this. Let's just multiply x raised to minus n into x raised to n. The bases are the same. So what you do? Retain the base and add the powers. So minus n plus n. Now minus n plus n cancel, right? So cancels out. So now it's basically equal to x raised to 0 and we know x raised to 0 is 1. So we know that x raised to minus n into x raised to n is equal to 1, right? So I can take this down. So x raised to minus n is equal to 1 by x raised to n. This is how they're equal. Alright, so this is part 4 on the GRE Quant Fundamental Playlist where we looked at exponents and roots. In part 5, I'll be looking at decimal numbers. So you may want to check that out as well. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd also appreciate it if you repost this on Facebook and tell your friends about it. These lectures are completely free and for the benefit of the student. So I'd appreciate it if you get the word out and spread the knowledge. Cheers! Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get access to all my videos. I release new lectures every Thursday. Cheers!